Uh, I don't see myself. There we go. All right. Bruchim Abayim, everyone. Welcome to Derek Haishar Ministries. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Uh, we have a wonderful Havdalah uh, special for you tonight. It was kind of a, kind of a surprise for everybody. We kind of kept it hush-hush, but uh, we have a very special guest tonight uh, to close the Shabbat with us. Uh, I'm a student. I have been a student of uh, Yeshivat Shuvu for pretty close to 10 years now. Uh, I have graduated as a Moray. Uh, Rabbi Shapira has, has been so gracious to uh, help us in ministry and to help us along in the ministry that Hashem has given us. And it's a great joy and a wonderful pleasure tonight to have him here in the ministry in which he helped birth because he took me and my wife under his wing and he taught us and he educated us and he encouraged us and he prayed for us and he just helped us come along so long, uh, so, such a long way from where we were at. And we're just absolutely grateful and we're thrilled. Um, Rabbi Shapiro is the author of many different books. Uh, the latest one is The Fall of Edom. Uh, prior to that is The New Hamas, The Great Organized Chaos. And before that is the Rivka Remnant and also the Basor according to COVID-19 and also the uh, Return of the Kosher Pig. Uh, all great, incredible resources that you can go to ahavadami.org, pick up uh, a copy of these books. You'll be greatly uh, blessed by it. And we're just absolutely thrilled and honored to have him here at our Kahila tonight as we've got a great following. We thank you for those who are online who are, are coming to listen to this special shiur. So without any further ado, we uh, welcome Rabbi Shapira up here to the Bima uh, to give us a special shiur and for Havdalah this evening. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> you will notice that I drink a lot. The reason I drink a lot is because I speak a lot. And there's a lot... A lot to be said about the days that we are living in right now. But before I start, I just, in a little bit more personal note about what's happening here in the area, um, I want to thank the Lord for the life of Lance and Cheney. And it's true, I, I still uh, remember Lance and Cheney when they were in Atlanta, Georgia. And you know, the, the, the thing that is amazing to me, some of you know, some of you don't know, we run a yeshiva. And the yeshiva I've seen, I'm not joking when I say, thousands and thousands of people coming through it since the inception. We have seen thousands and thousands of people th throughout this season from 2000 and late 2013, early 2014. And um, most people give up on the journey most people, uh, how do we say it in a nice way, they flunk. They, they, they're not able to finish. And some people are making it, but for the most part, people ask me the question, what does it mean to finish the yeshiva, to complete the yeshiva? And I told them this, and this is what I said. I said, there's an evidence of transformation in your life. And there is a fruit, there is something that you can show for in your life. And the thing about, uh, I, I do want to say something about Lance and Shane. Their journey to be here right now has been one, I, I'm looking at all my students, it's been one of the most difficult journeys that I can really think of. Most people would have quit, give up, go crazy, go to depression, what, whatever it is. But they didn't. They didn't. They are here. And not only that they are here, we have maybe over 2,000 people coming to the program. Maybe 25 have been ordained. Lance is one of those people who have been ordained. It's an amazing achievement. And I do not know. I'm not a prophet. I don't know what God is going to do with your uh, fellowship here. But I can tell you this, I do believe that both Lance and Shaney have been raised up for this time. And today we are in time that people take um, titles quite lightly. Morim, teachers, 
Roim, pastors, rabbis, whatever title you want. But you know, to get those titles, you really have to earn them. It's it's earned thing, and and uh, Lance really earned this title, uh, rightfully so. And I want you to know that 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 he really earned a title from all of us in in the leadership of Avatami International, the Shiva Chuvu. And it's not easy. It's not. I mean, he had to go through some rigorous stuff. And if you knew how many times he quit on me and came back, we will be here until next week of Dala. But the, the thing is the Holy Spirit never let him truly quit, truly. And that's the thing you look at the leadership. So I encourage everybody here, stick with your leaders, stick with your leaders, support your leaders, believe in your leaders. And I'm telling you, God is going to surprise us in what is going to do. Lance is a hard to be starting a congregation for many, many years, many, many years. And every time it didn't happen for this reason or that reason. And look at this, out of chaos, he birthed something wonderful and that's our God. He can take something that is messy and make it something beautiful and, and wonderful. We need to pray. I told Lance today, the moment he get the building, Call me. We'll donate Sefer Torah so that you guys will be able to really do that. So Avatam International here in in publicly already committed to a Sefer Torah when the bill you, you, you got it on tape. Yeah. You know, it's it, it, we're saying it because I believe in you guys. Actually, let's let me just pray for everybody here as we start. Lord, thank you. How are good and, and precious it is. And wonderful it is, and, and glorious it is for uh, brothers to dwell together in unity. We are here in unity, in Achdud, in wanting to understand the time, the seasons. Lord, there is such a sweet spirit, even when you walk into this house, just sweetness. There is a sweetness of shalom. Bring shalom to all the work. And even we're in the turbulent, the most turbulent times in human history that you're in front of us. Lord, upon us, there's going to be a Goshen. There's going to be a Shalom. And God, you are raising up a remnant, a remnant believers here in the middle of the yuckiness of Washington State, where there is so much darkness. Lord, there is going to be light. There is light. There will be light. And we speak Isaiah 60 upon everybody. Arise and shine. Because your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful things that you are doing here in the future. Keep us from quarrels. Keep us from divisions. Keep us in achdut, in unity. In the merit of our Messiah. Amen and amen. amen. Well, um, first of all, thank you for the kind introduction, uh, Lens. It's, it's truly something I feel passionate about. You see this already on your screen right now. When I use those terms like survival, I am not joking, survival guide. One of the things that we are seeing right now before us, especially if you look at the body of Messiah, look what's happening in some of the biggest churches in America right now. We are seeing the epic collapse, the beginning of the epic collapse of the church. For example, look what just recently happened in IHOP as an example. Okay, one of the main biggest churches in America and other ministries. When Yeshua uses this term and he says some of the first will be lost and the last will be first, I believe he referred to the end times. One of the things that is started with the COVID-19 that is leading us to the time that we are here right now is I think everything will be visible. I think that will be one of the things that is going to be very clear to us. You know why? Because God is about to reveal himself. God does not want to meet a mask, right? And today teaching is going to uh, touch a little bit on Purim because next Saturday we are entering into Purim. And in Purim, we, 
we wear masks, right? We, we come with a custom, we come with the masks. And one of the things that we do in Purim, don't do it, I don't recommend it, but I'll tell you a Hasidic tradition, is to drink so much wine that you don't know the difference between Haman and be Ooh, there you go between Haman, very good, and between Mordechai. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. You're ready for, yeah, they're very bring your groggers, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Now, here's the thing that you have to understand there is something about this that we have to understand when you're so drunk that you cannot put a mask on yourself. That's when the Geula can come. You, you realize we can hide and we can do this and we can do that. But there's going to be a time, as the prophet Isaiah said, that even the holes, it says that prophet Isaiah, we cannot even be like the moles. We cannot be hiding. And those days are before us. Now, the question is, what's going to happen to the righteous people in this time? What about the righteous? Here is the bomb for everybody. Even the righteous are going to be judged. I want you to remember that. Paul makes this point clear that even the tzaddikim, the righteous, are also going to be facing judgment. And this is something that we all have to think about. Now, the reason I am saying survival guide for Acharit Ayamim, the latter day, the last days, is because I do believe we're going to be judged. And the question is how we are going to pass and overcome the time that is known as the Ekevot Mashiach, the, the, the birthing pangs of the Messiah. How we can overcome this birthing is the question. Now, if you have not had a chance, this is going to be the one and only time I mentioned those books. Those three books, the Rivka Remnant, the Fall of Edom, and the New Hamas, I am telling you, read those books. It's worth your time to read them. Enter those concepts into your heart. I am going to be teaching a little bit today from the fall of Edom, 10 things that I feel that are necessary for us to grasp. In 2 Peter 3, verses 10 to 12, the question is being asked by Peter, what kind of people are we going to be? If I can expand on this for a second, is it more a bigger question? What kind of people need ought to become in order to be able to overcome Acharit Ayamim to last days? I'm telling you something. I am traveling all over the world, and what I am seeing, the darkness that is looming over there, I cannot even explain it. It's not like 2020. COVID-19 opened the door, and I want you to understand this. It's open a door, and now the door in October the 7th. And yes, October the 7th, you should know that, has been prophesied in the Bible. October the 7th, defense, the judicial uh, overturning in Israel, everything is all in the Bible. Close CNN, close Fox News, and open the Bible, because that's going to be your best place for current event going forward. The Bible better become real for all of us on those days. So please take advantage. I don't have many resources left. Take advantage today. Read those books and make sure that you really take to heart the message of this. It's time for us to make the Bible, I really believe, very real in our life. It's have to become a reality because God's return is imminent. And a matter of fact, since next week, next Shabbat, we're going to enter to Purim. I, I, I want to give you a guide to enter into Purim next week. Lance, are you going to do something for the uh, uh, reading of the Megillah? This is important. You know, uh, reading the Megillah, specifically, there are 10 chapters, and I know you're going to teach also in Avata Me channel as well. There is a rule that the, the, the rabbis tell us about reading the story of Esther. Okay, and I want you to think about what they say. Please, let's go to the next slide. Listen to what it said. With regard to one who read the Megillah out of order, reading a later section first. We call it like flipping pages, you know? Listen to this. And then going back to an earlier section. He has not fulfilled the obligation. If you read it by heart, or you read it in Aramaic translation, or read it in any other language that he does not understand, 
he has not fulfilled his obligation. The key about this story and the Megillat Esther is to read it in a language that you can understand. Why? Because this understanding, the, the, this, this, this book called Megillat Esther, is called Mismach Geula. What is Mismach Geula? A document of redemption. A document of redemption. So a document of redemption is something you really understand. The rabbi said the redemption you have to understand. It's not like a mitzvah, like a mitzvah. You don't have to understand the mitzvah in order for it to be a good mitzvah. You do it in obedience. But when we are talking about redemption, and the birthing stages of the coming of the Messiah, we have to understand those steps. So we're going to look at those steps, step by step. Never, Rabbi Schneerson says the following, next slide. He says, why the Megillah have to be read in order? Listen to this. When a person reads the story of Purim as a story of the past, without applying the Megillah to now, okay, he is going to be in trouble. Does that sound like a, another verses when we read it? When you open the Haggadah a month later, right? What it says, a man has to see himself as he leave Egypt today. You follow what? You have to make the Bible real. You have to make the story of redemption real. Look at that. When a person read the Megillah out of order, he can't leave or relieve the events. As he does not understand the complete plan of redemption. So, believe it or not, the entire story of a woman named Esther is the plan of redemption. There is a, the theme of redemption. And I'm going to tell you straight up, if you read the fall of Edom, you're going to see two things. Esther, decoded in the Torah, and Haman, is also decoded in the Torah. And Mordecai is also decoded on the Torah. They all are being decoded in the Torah, all of them. That's why those books are called Mismach Geula Le Geula, which means a document of redemption that they explain to you redemption. So the, the, the key for all of us is to understand the redemption. So when we read Bible right now, and I'm not just talking about the book of Esther, I'm talking about the entire word of God, especially when you read the Torah portion, for example, always look for redemptive to redemptive themes. Look for Mashiach. You know, Judaism said you are not allowed to calculate the time. You don't allow to calculate the time of the coming of Mashiach. But when October 7 hit, the chief rabbi of Israel said, now we have to talk about the coming of the Messiah. Now it's imminent for us to really start to talk about the coming of Messiah. So we have to look on this. Why? Because there is one theme for the book of Esther that you always have to remember. And this is the key. Look at this. Next slide. Things are not what they appear. This is the key to remember. Whatever you think about redemption, about the coming of Messiah, I promise you, it's not going to happen the way you think it is. Why? Because God is going to remove some masks. And some things that we thought were good are going to be bad. And some things we thought was going to be bad are going to turn out good. This is important. So what are we looking for in Megillat Esther? You know what you're looking for? Think about the word Esther. What do you hear in times of the word Esther? You hear the word mistor. That's where you get the word in English, mystery. That's where the word mystery comes. You know, the word mystery is coming from the Hebrew language. When you say mystery in Hebrew, you actually say the name Esther. That's it. That, that, mistor is a hiding place. Esther is hiding. It's a toy. So what we are looking for actually right now are the things that are hidden, which is interesting. That's why we always have to understand this, that the things that appear in the physical have a spiritual things, like the invisible world, that are hidden. Don't be foolish and think only what your eyes are seeing is what's going on, what's happening behind the scene right now. No, they're not. There are things that are hidden. Now, you have to remember that. Megillat Esther and the Torah are the two set of books that hold the greatest prophetic value. 
There is no greater prophecy to see Messiah, son of David, Messiah, son of Joseph, to see the redemption, to see the anti-Messiah than the book of Esther. And that's why the Torah itself prophesy on the book of Esther. We're going to, we're going to see this. Let's look at this for example. In Midrash Shukher Tov, which is an important Midrash, next slide, it says this. Well, go back. Oh, okay. That, that's fine. You are here. This is important. Go, go forward one slide, Shani, and then we go backwards. Okay, this is good. Listen to what it says. This is a Midrash written on the book of Psalms. It says, all the Moadim, look at that. All the Moadim, which are the appointed time, will be nullified, but at the days of Purim will never be canceled. Do you know that? All the Moadim will be no more Moadim. Okay? I'm talking about the Messianic kingdom afterward. Judaism said there will be no Moadim. There will be one Moed that will be staying. It is Purim. And in a minute, you understand why Purim is going to be whole held in. Now, you have to understand the Chagim and the Moadim like that, right? As a cycle. They're all kind of a roadmap for coming of Mashiach. Shane, if you don't mind going slide back, look at this for a second. The prophetic season of Adar, which is the time of Purim, is come up from two words, as you see on your screen. Aleph, which is the name of God, Adonai, Aluf, like in Isaiah and Jeremiah, he's called the Aluf, the Aleph, right? And the word Dar, the word Dar is mean a dweller. Adar means God is a dweller or preparation of the dwelling place for God. If I can say one more word about this, we're just finishing the book of Shemot today, right? What happened in the end of the book of Shemot? What, what happened? The Shekhinah comes to the... The Shekhinah coming! Yeah. Now, next week, we are starting the book of Leviticus. What is the very first thing that is happening in the book of Leviticus? Who is walking into the Mishkan? Yes, yes, but who is ultimately going to work in the Mishkan? Aaron, uh, the high priest. The very first time in the Bible that we see the word Mashiach mentioned, is in next week parasha. Read it. It's in Leviticus chapter 4. It's next week Torah portion. We see the very first time we even introduced to the term Mashiach. You follow this? There cannot be Mashiach if there is no tabernacle for the Mashiach to come in. And this is something important that we have to understand. Adar is the mode of preparation. Think about Yeshua words. Oh, Matthew 20, 23. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how long together you like I can get a chick, but you were not willing. Your house will be left desolate until you say. What does it mean? Baruch Hashem? Well, it's a little bit more than welcome. If I come to Lance and Shaney home and there is no mezuzah on the door and I walk here and there's no food. You don't dare tell me Baruch Lance. It's so un-Jewish not to have food. <laughs> Baruch Haba, you mean that your house is stocked up for me? And you didn't see me eat yet. When I eat, I eat, Lance. Yes. Noah and I are very hungry, right, Noah? Say amen. Yeah, amen. amen. <laughs> Baruch Haba B'Shem Adonai is the season of Adar. You follow that, what I'm telling you? The world is prepared. Preparation. What most of the world want to do right now, I was just on Christian TV the other day. What do they want to ask me about? Rabbi Shamir, when is the rapture? Is it Are we one step closer to the rapture? That is the wrong thinking. Because listen, what is the next month? What is the month of redemption? Nisan. Nisan, right? That's when redemption takes place. Nisan. Think about the word Nisan. Ness. What is this? Anybody know? Miracles, exactly. You cannot get to miracles, real miracles, without preparing the house of God. When Yeshua said, what is really is telling to us today, get yourself ready, get your houses in order, get the world in order. 
Get your communities in order. Get your congregation in order. Get your family in order. Get your marriage in order. Get your children in order. Get everything in order because I'm coming. And Baruch Adba, he's like, ding, everything is order. We're ready. It is not that we are waiting upon Mashiach. It is Mashiach who is waiting upon us. And think about it. Would it be a Geula in the book in Megillat Esther unless Esther would have taken the action that she had taken? Would it be a redemption to, to, to the people of Shushan? No, there wouldn't be any redemption to the people of Shushan without Esther. And if this is the truth, what did the people have to do? What did Esther told the, 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 the people to do? Go and do what she said, Mordecai? Go and fast over me. The people have part to play in the Geula. Now think about this word Nisan for a moment. The word Nisan is also related to the word Nisayon. Nisayon is trials. So as much as we want to talk about signs, wonders, and miracles, let us be truthful for the prophetic time. Everywhere. There are going to be trials. How many of you have been tested here? You feel every day you're being tested. You feel you're being tested? Well, guess what? The testing will lead to miracles if you're able to overcome. Think about it. How many tests did Abraham have had in his life? Ten. How many miracles Abraham seen? He's seen ten, 10 miracles. How many in the tablets? How many commandments there are? Ten. When Adam was born into the world and God was waiting to him in the garden, how many canopies were? There were ten. How many virgins are there? Ten. How many, how many gentle hold the city of a Jew? Ten. Because it represents these trials that you're going to go through. Especially if you live in Washington, <laughs> you don't even have extra time. Extra. So, so when we are talking about the prophetic map here, brothers and sisters, you have to understand something. You cannot get to the Nisan, which is, of course, the month of redemption, as we know, unless you can go through Adar, which preparing the house for God. Here is the catch. One of the things that's going to happen on those days that we're preparing a house. Imagine. If I tell you, hey, I am coming over on Thursday afternoon, but you never met me. I am an imaginary friend. Okay, have you ever had imaginary friends? That will be a problem. If I tell you there is an imaginary friend, I call Lance today, I said, there is an imaginary friend that I am sending next Shabbat here. And you have to do some extreme thing. You have to make his bed for him. You have to prepare this. And he says, okay, okay, that's great. But who is this friend? And I said, eh, Lance, don't ask questions about who. You have to prepare this to imaginary friend. What he will think? He will think I am crazy, right? Because I'm preparing the house for imaginary friend. But this is the reality that you all have to contend with. Because this imaginary friend is not going to reveal himself until the house is perfectly. And you will not see him until this day. That's what Yeshua meant when he said, look, your house is going to left desolate. Desolate means you're not going to see him. You're not going to experience it. And as a matter of fact, in the fall of Edom, they said it's going to be so bad that the Jewish people are going to dig their own grave. And they're going to say, I wish I died today inside the grave. God bury me alive and put me in the grave. Can you, can you imagine that? To have time of despair, complete removal of God from the world. Look at this. The theme of Purim, number one, is the theme of Geulah. Look, look at me for a second what is hidden in the Hebrew inside the, the word Purim. Inside the word Purim, if you take the word Purim and you just remove one letter, what word do you get? Kippurim. What is Kippurim, anybody? What is called Yom Kippurim? Right? The day of covering, also known as the day of atonement. And that's something that you have to, to remember that is going to take place. Yom Kippur is a day of heaviness, right? It's a day of judgment. There is a hint here. Remember in the end of the story of, of Purim, he said that Jews had a days of gladness and enjoy, right? Like we say it every day in Avdalah, every Shabbat in the Avdalah. But before we can get to, the, to this day, we have to go to judgment. Wow. 
How do we overcome judgment? How does one go overcome judgment? In the book of Zechariah chapter 8, it says, Thus said the Lord of all, the fast of the fourth month, fifth month, seventh month, and the tenth month will become an occasion of joy and gladness. Happy festival in the house of Judah. They, but you must love honesty and what? And integrity. You, you follow those things. Nobody is going to get to the sad days of gladness without honesty and without integrity. Those are the two things that you have to look for in the world and in leadership. As a matter of fact, I talk on the book about 10 signs of things that will be lacking from the world. You know, one of the 10 things that God says is going to be lacking for the world. Write yourself a note. Look up Isaiah 59, 15. Isaiah 59, 15 said, the one thing that will be lacking from the world, a systematic thing, is truth. Truth is going to, there will be no absolute truth. You'll have your truth. You'll have your truth. Let us go and have his truth. Every person going to have their own truth, their own version of the truth. And we have to, you notice that in the world here already today, right? You can sense it. You can feel it. And what did he say? There will be no lack of judgment. What does it might mean? The mishpat, the word mishpat in Hebrew is truth in relationship. Well, no, what you call Lashonara is not my Lashonara. What you call gossip is not my gossip. What you call wrong, I don't call. This truth that's going to be lacking, what the Torah is calling honesty and integrity, is truth that's going to attack you. And I'm telling you, it's going to attack even your ministry. So you need to be guarded. Truth in relationship. Truth in the horizontal. Guard, guard, and guard again your relationship and your speech and your tongue more than anything else. If you have inclination of gossip and Lashonara, run away from that. Better to cut off your tongue than, than deal with that. So one of the things that we have to understand, yes, there's going to be a happy ending here. We are going to get to Purim. But before we get to Purim, we have to go to Kippurim. So the question becomes, how do we leave Kippurim and how do we overcome the Kippurim, the judgment of the Lord, the judgment that is already started, and how do we get to the next level, okay? Which is gladness, day of gladness and days of joy. Go to the next slide, Cheney, please. Look at this with me for a moment. The second theme of Purim has to do with the word Esther. How do we do it? The word Esther, again, Aleph is the name of God. Adonai, Seter. Adonai is in Seter. Think about, for example, um, Esther. What was her real name? Hadassah. What does Hadassah mean? Well, what is, what, what is Hadass, though? Myrtle. Myrtle. Everybody says she had a color, like a green color to her, like a marble. Okay, that's why she was, look at that. She was going by a disguised name. All the story, we don't refer to her as a dust just at the beginning. And then all of a sudden it becomes Esther. The one thing that you have to be able to do is to be able to look through a spiritual eyes at everything to be able to see behind the obvious. And you're not going to get it in TikTok. You're not going to get it on CNN, the Communist Network News. <laughs> You're not going to get it in these places. And even Mashiach. You have to be able to recognize him and how he's going to work on the world. You know why? Because Messiah himself, everybody understand that Esther is a picture of Mashiach, right? Esther herself, she is disguised in the story. And some of the things today, we don't see Hashem work. We don't see Mashiach work, but he's there. It's the only book in the Bible where the name of God is not even mentioned once. But anybody have any doubt whether God is pulling string behind? Of course it is. The word here, Esther, literally means hidden, mystery, mystore. But the question becomes, if you don't mind going to the next slide, why? Would God hide himself? If God loves his creation so much, why God will hide himself? And this is, friends, 
where this test and the challenge of the last days is coming for each and every one of you. God is going to be so hidden from the world so that we will not be able to recognize God because he's testing us to see who has a muna, who has faith. Remember the words of Yeshua in Matthew 24? He says, one thing that you must do is to hold on until the end. Hold on until the end. Holding on itself, itself at the end. Like I keep on calling Lance and I tell him, next day, this imaginary friend's coming. Next day and next day. Eventually, he will say, forget it. I don't believe you. You see, you have to endure. And that's what Yeshua is speaking about more than anything else. Enduring. Enduring until the end. What is the purpose of Astarat Apanim? The, the, the concept that God hiding his face, it's not like, like, like uh, you know, have you ever had an argument with your spouse? Never, never, right? No. We never argue with our spouses. Yes? But you know, when you sometimes argue with your spouse, what you do? You go to one corner, the other person go to the, it's like a timeout in a basketball game, yeah? And you just like can't stand the other person like, ugh, I don't want to see them, right? That is called hastarat apanim. Hastarat apanim, don't come to my space, okay? That's not hastarat apanim of God. That's not the way God works. Hastarat apanim of God is he saying to you, I am going to put you in time out so that you think about this and you will come to me, back to me in a better attitude, in a different spirit. He never do hastarat apanim, and people misunderstand that, especially with Israel, that he completely leave Israel. No, he's always there. But he's waiting on Israel to turn back to him in those days. So we need to understand the purpose of Astarat Apanim. This is going to be the biggest test of your life, without a doubt, in the days ahead. I'm telling you, it's going to get so hard and so bad, the moment Wall Street will collapse, and it will collapse, the moment we don't have enough food, and we don't have enough water, people will turn to be like an animals. And if you don't think it's going to happen, you're clearly not paying attention to the news and to the warning we are receiving about the basic necessities that are going to be taken away from us. Very, very, you know, now like in, in Israel, they are so excited. People start to eat this beyond meat stuff. They're so excited by this. Did you see this stuff? Disgusting. They have a plan to make us all eating beyond meat very, very soon. You should know what is coming in. Don't be ignorant of those things. Get yourself ready. Because on those days coming, many people will say there is no God in the world. They are coming. And it's going to come so fast. One of the sun. Anybody here pay attention to how fast Time is moving right now. Anybody play around with chat GPT in the internet? Don't. It's scary. You can tell him and within seconds, you can have just about anything in the tip of your hand. Knowledge, information is exploding. It's one of the signs of the coming of Messiah. The time appears to move fast. It doesn't appear. Time is moving faster. Things are moving faster. And this is the time where you're going to ask yourself, I am going to ask ourselves, we all are going to ask ourselves, where is God? After all, God is sovereign, right? God is sovereign, he's supervisor. And the question is, how do we come, overcome the time of Esther, the time of Astarat Apanim? Yes, it's going to be judgment, I believe. And one of the things that's going to be very upsetting to people who read the fall of Edom is to understand this. Let me give you this bomb because I want you to hear what I'm saying to you. Many people read the word that is called the Gog and Magog as a one-time event. It's a lie. Gog and Magog is an era of roughly 90 years 
And many, many years ago, the rabbis explained to us that Gog and Magog have three parts to it. Show me a war that has lasted roughly 90 years that have three parts to it. Mm, I know, 1940, 14, 1940, and the final war that is coming. We are already in Gog and Magog. We are already in this thing. You should know the truth, beloved. The climatic of Gog and Magog is about to happen, but we are already inside Gog and Magog right now. And the more we're looking in the world, the more we're seeing God becoming invisible in the world. Why would God do it? Why would God do this? Why would he hide his face in such a way? It's not because he's an angry spouse. Look at what David Melech says in Psalm 51, 11. I love this. He said, you, haster panecha michatai. Hide your face from your sins, blot out all my iniquities. What is the purpose of God? Here is the purpose of God. Fashion a pure heart for me. All oh God, create in me a steadfast spirit. God is hiding his face because he wants a remnant bride. More than anything else, he wants a remnant. So he can marry it. And you should know when Paul said, not all of Israel is Israel. Now I understand it. Just a few weeks ago, we donated a bomb shelter in Israel. You know, now people come to us and say, we rather see our children die. Die from the rocket of Hezbollah than receive money from messianics? Are you hearing what I'm telling you? It's sick, it's sickness, it's sad. Why is it? Because not all of Israel is Israel, you should know why. And many people are missing the sign right now. You see, David the Melech used the term as terapanai, he wanted to have everything white, but in order to have it right, he need a period of time out. We have entered right now a period of time out. There are three periods, like there are three elements of Gog and Magog. There are three periods in Gog and Magog. In the book of Isaiah 26, he says to Isaiah the prophet, enter to the room and block out your room, right? The Hebrew word room, cheder, is an acronym of chet, dalet, resh. Chen is chesed meaning grace, Dalet is Din, judgment, Resh is Rachamim. There are three. This is a cycle you see again and again in the scripture. We are going from the period of grace to a period of judgment to a period of mercy that is coming. Where we are right now, we're in the Din. The judgment has begun. And you should know it. This judgment is not just on the wicked. The judgment is also on the righteous. It's on everybody. But look at what he's asking for. He said, give me Elohim. Now, this is important because he's not saying, give me Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey. Give me Elohim. Are you noticing that? What's the difference between saying Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey and saying, give me Elohim? You see, when he uses the term Elohim, Elohim is a judge. He understand, King David understand, in order to receive grace and be born again, he has to go to judgment. When he use Yudai Vavei, it's only the attribute of grace and mercy. This is our pattern here. In order to receive a right spirit, the Holy Spirit within myself, I have to be judged. One of the questions we have to ask ourselves today, are we willing to be judged by Hashem? It's hard, right? It's scary. I'm terrifying, especially as a Torah teacher. He says, Walter, the Torah teacher, I'm going to judge you even harder than the regular people. That's scary. Who did I mislead? Who did I mistreat? What did I do wrong? God help us. You should not. Look at the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 17, 18. He said, because of the iniquity of his unjust, Gain was angry. I stand.
attack struck him, and God said, what is God's mode of punishment? I hid my face. I understand the word I hid my face is the same word as the word Esther. That is the word Esther for, the name Esther for. Hiding my face is the word Esther. But here's the thing that we always have to remember. It is not all gloom and doom. It is not all gloom and doom. Look what he says. I have seen his ways, but here's my favorite part. I will do what? I will heal him. I will lead him. And I will restore what? Comfort to him and to his mourner. Okay, Lance? With the sun. We're having some lag issues. Oh, lag, lag issue. There's like, nobody trying to get on the internet. Right? Yes, I mean, this is just the enemy trying to stop this. Okay, we're going just trusting a sham for this. Look at what he's saying. The astarat panim, which is a judgment, not leading to destruction, but is going to lead to what? It's going to lead for, for healing. And it's going to lead for restoration. And it's going to lead for the comfort. Return to who? Not to anybody. To those who mourn. And that's the key I want to tell. The word here in Hebrew, mourn, is the word avelav. This is the people who are willing to partake in teshuva without repentance. And that's what, what Yeshua said. Repent. The kingdom of God is there. Without repentance, there is no way one can overcome what's coming ahead of us. We need to repent today, all of us, without exception, for what we have done to the name of our Messiah. And that's not just the wicked. That's also the righteous. We all need to be on our hands and knees and we all be cry to God and say, we are sorry. We are sorry for those things. Now look at what he's going to do to those who are saying we are sorry. He is going to restore to them the comfort. Now let me ask you a question. What is the Hebrew word for comfort? The comforter. Who is the comforter? The Holy Spirit. What did Yeshua promise us? He said, I am leaving you with the Menachem, with the all Holy Spirit. Even Rashi says the following next slide he says on the word i will heal him and i will lead him in hebrew is the word ve'anhehu. i will lead him in the way of healing alternatively is the expression of rest and tranquility this is good news for all of us we do not live like the rest of the world in the time of chaos in the time of tribulation if you know the comforter if you know the comforter and the one who sent the comforter guess what even in the time of chaos and in the time of balagan and in the time of mess guess what's going to happen you are still going to receive healing this is good news because in Egypt, there was a Goshen. While Egypt was on fire, when Egypt, having all those flag, pl uh, plagues, look what happened in Goshen. Goshen did not suffer the same wrath of those things. This is a good thing for all of us to know. You can thrive in the midst of chaos god wants us to know that that we can thrive in the midst of chaos don't be like the rest of the world who's going to believe in the supernatural believe in science believe in miracle believe in prosperity not the prosperity gospel like what they teach you understand what i'm saying believe in the supernatural God is going to provide those things to you today in this expression. I love what Rashi said, in rest and tranquility. You know this word in Hebrew, ancheu, ancheu. What you hear inside those words, ancheu. Look at the beautiful thing. Which name of which person you see inside of the word ancheu? He's a person who built a special ark. What was his name? Exactly, bravo. Inside the word Ancheu, there is a link. And the rabbi said, this verse that I just read you, speaking about the days like the days of Noah. 
And isn't it interesting that Yeshua said that the days that he's going to return like the days of Noah, what's going to happen in the days like the days of Noah? Well, guess what? Go back a second, go back a slide, Dishane, if you don't mind. He said, to those who repent, I will restore the comfort. Hallelujah. You don't have to live in fear. You don't have to live in doubt. You don't have to live on what's going to obey him. Repent, return to him, and God is going to do more miracles during, during this time. And not only that, I mean, look what he says here in the text. And the next thing he says, so not only in he said, Ve'eshalem nechumim. Look at this word, Ve'eshalem nechumim. The word eshalem is a very interesting word. You know what eshalem mean? Eshalem mean I'm going to open my checkbook, right? Ashalem. I'm popping the checkbook and I'm writing the big check for the people. This, it, it's like the word Eshel. It's also related to the word Shalem. Shalom. Well, what Shalom means? Shalom doesn't mean peace. Shalom means pay something in full. What he's saying, I am going to pay their full price. This is a promise that is given. Yeah, there's a call. There is, there is still, look. There's still a starat panim. Hey, hey, there's still a starat panim. I'm not hiding myself. But behind, I'm going to be the generous donor. Anonymous check. Anonymous check. Lanza, you need anonymous check right now? $100,000 for a building? Yes. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, there's a check in your name right now. If you return and repent, more than any check you can imagine. And it's the check from the mighty one of Israel. Hashalem nechumim. Look at the word in the second one. Nechumim. Shani, go to the next slide, please. Here we go. Next slide. Next slide. Thank you. Look at the word of Shalem Nechumim. I will send the comfort in Nechumim, the Menachem, the Nechama. It's a prophecy about what Yeshua has done for us. Yeshua said, I'm leaving you, but I'm leaving Menachem. Yes, I am in a starat panim mode upon the universe. But you, I have a personal relationship with you. The check is available for you today. Do not forget that. Do not live your life like the rest of the people all running. We're like a chicken with a head cut off. You don't want to live, need to live your life like this. Because you know the one who has paid for you. I will send Nechama. I will send the one who is called Menachem. And what he's saying is, look at the word Menachem. I will send a comforter to you. This is something really important that God is saying here in the time of Astarat Panim. It's the worst time. It's the worst time for us. And, and you have to understand something. Even in the worst time, he's saying, I am still going to leave you this check. And that is comforting message. But here is the problem. Here's the catch. Next slide. If there is a starat panim, we need to have a backer, a generous backer, to write the big check. And there is a name for him. That's Mashiach. That's the Goel. And that's how the Geulah come. So the question becomes, who is, what, what, what does he promise us here? Look at this next slide, if you don't mind, Shani. Who is the Menachem? He promised us, right? Oh, did I? Okay, I have a different slide. How can we overcome Astarat Apanim? How can we over? Well, next slide, Shane, if you don't mind, one more question. Okay, I don't have this slide, whatever. Okay, who is the Menachem? And how can we receive this comfort today? How can I want to get the free check today? What do I have to do? Or in other words, how can I overcome the terrible days that are coming? Ahead of us, I want to receive today the Menachem because the Menachem is the only hope that I have for Astarat Apanim. How do we receive him? What does it mean even to receive Yeshua into my heart? Should I come up forward to a buffet line and just say, Yeah, 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 and then dunk in a pool and that's it? Is that all what it takes? No, it's not. I know it's not a popular message. There is more to this message, and the prophet is telling us about this. 
And I want you to think about what it says about this Menachem. Who is this Menachem? We have to know him. We have to know something about him. Look what it says. Next slide. Oops, go back. Go, go back. I mean, forward, 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 forward. Okay. Lance, you outdid yourself. Go back. Lance, I'm sorry. I need your technical support here. Just for a second. Get me on Baruch Hashem. One second. You see, this is when I got slain in the spirit and I had some bonus material. Uh, password. Okay. Um, just just one it? second. What is it? What is technical it? tip. Shrina. Shrina, one, two, three, right? Oh, rega, 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 I got it, I got it, it's all good. We are good, we are good, we are good, we just got too excited. Are you with me? Because this is the most important part. How do we need, how are we going to overcome those days? Listen to what it says about those things. This is the people respond. Go to the next slide. He said, surely it is because our God is not in our midst that these evils have befallen us. This is going to be the response of the people in the day. He said, I am telling you, people are going to lose faith in Hashem. In Hashem. Some of the greatest people who you thought they are full of the knowledge of God, they're going to be like a house of cards. And they're going to be falling. Those days, and you have to understand something, it's a spirit in the world. It's a spirit in the world called Akevot HaMashiach. Look what it says about those specific days in Psalm 89, verse 52. It says, how your enemies, O oh Lord, have flung abuse. Abuse at your Mashiach at every step. Now you have to understand what the verse is saying here. They says that the enemies of God have one agenda in the world. Have you ever been in a um, baseball field, right? You have the, I'm not a baseball expert, so if I'm not using the right terminology, but did you ever come to a baseball game before the pregame when they're, they, they have like uh, those uh, vacuum cleaners, whatever they call them, in uh, the area where it's not the grass, it's the wood, the um, dirt. What do they do? They make it perfect. There are no footprints anymore. You know, they, they, they like use a vacuum. It's really, really cool machine. I saw it. I've been once in a baseball game. I brought a consultant to the game. It was <laughs> quite, quite an experience. The word here that is used, charpo oivecha, is speaking about that. It's a vacuum cleaner that's going to take the footsteps of God from the world and the zzz, zzz, zzz. Oh, this is God? Oh, God created man as a man and a woman as the woman? No! Let us wipe it out. Now you can be a binary. Are you following what I, I am checking with American Airlines? And ask me, are you binary? You have not checked it. No, I'm not binary. I'm shaving. I'm a man. Why do I need to be apologizing to that? And you see it here. Do you know how many people today I saw in the drive here that are men? Oh, excuse me, that are women that now become, I, 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 me and the, the rabbit said, we just couldn't believe it. Just saying it is those things. Why? You have to understand the systematic force that is working right now in the world. It's a force that seeks to wipe out anything about Genesis 1 and 1 and the creation. There is no more creator. We are the creator of the world. We are becoming God. That's idolatry, friends. We are becoming God. So here the prophet says that this time is going to be so difficult, okay, that it's going to be flung in abuse. And this abuse is against who? Ultimately, who is the anointed one? Yeah. It's against Mashiach. You have to understand that. We're going to come down to it. Now, these, these footsteps that we're looking like in a baseball field, 
are systematically being sucked out of the world. You need to make sure that our generation do not let those footsteps be removed. The moment you compromise, and I'm telling you this, this is one of the things I talk about the fall of Edom, and I want you to hear it from the heart of God. Did he say that they're going to be in Matthew 25, 32, ships and goats? He is drawing the line in the sand. And if you're going to compromise the line in any way, shape, or truth, way, and the truth, if you're going to compromise the truth, guess what? You yourself are going to be wiped out. No, you will be canceled. Let me tell you that. If you live here in Washington State and you're not going to live as fanatic right-wing conspiracists as they call you, if you're not going to live in a fanatic way for God, let me tell you something. This culture going to swallow you and take God out of every inch of your body. You have to make a decision. And this is the worst decision. This is the difference between this generation and every generation before us. You see, the generation before the coming of the Messiah, Rabbi Lugasi explained to us, is a generation to go, the generation of the heel. The heel, right? Heel, heel, heel. Why? Heel is not something nice. Heal is something ugly. Heal is the lowest part of the human body. And I want you to think about what Rabbi Lugasi said. He said the human body has many organs and severe and, and that serve specific function. The brain, the eyes, the ears, and so on. However, the heal is the lowest part of the human body. Why is it? Is this time called the heels of the Messiah? We are in the town, in the time that is called the hills of the Mashiach. The hill is an allegory for the time of preparation of the world below, Adar, to our world, to repair the world. The human body has much more significant organs than eels, right? Just as uh, eyes and ears, we have a generation. Think about the generation of your Yeshua, Hillel and Shammai. They were like smart. They actually live according to Torah. I met the other week, the chief rabbi of, of, of Dallas. You know what he tell me? Our generation right now, we are like the poorest of the poorest. He say every generation for me, my mind down, 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 down. To the point he said, we are, this generation is nothing. It's, we are, you're so bankrupt, this generation. Okay? The giant of the faith, the prophet, the Tanaim, the Amoraim, the Geonim, Rashi, Rambam. They were way, way, way higher than us. Okay? They knew much, much more. And people actually were a lot smarter before they have te technology. Did you realize that? All those computers make us pretty dumb. Okay? Now listen to this. this. Hair brought the body to the level of the heel. They serve a purpose. They serve a good purpose here. Or the ill, which is the final rectification that is needed. Now, here's the thing you need to, to, to think about. The ill function is not as brilliant as the eye of the ill. It is, it has the physical function of walking on any terrain. No matter how filthy the terrain is, that's exactly the word of Yeshua to us. He say, walk it out, no matter. And you can walk on serpents. You can walk on scorpions. We are called the generation of the hill. It doesn't mean that we are as glamorous. I am not Rabbi Akiva and neither Lance. But we have something different that they didn't have. And you need to understand what it is. We have a different function. Our function is to walk according to Torah from a place of simplicity and strength. I love this. Underline those two here. You do not need to become a great scholar of the Hebrew language to fulfill your purpose in life. Simplicity and strength. The two words that you need to hold on and not to lose heart is simplicity and strength, giving our soul to the journey. 
Our responsibility is to walk over the field around us. Oh my goodness. How much field there is here in Washington. So much field. You saw the picture free Palestine was there. I was taking a picture today. People like honking, yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, no. We are to step on it, yet remaining faithful to the Torah without too much human intellect. Listen, Torah does not have to be like, oh my gosh. Sometimes here, especially here, especially it's a problem in Washington state. All the ministries here are about Teaching, teaching, teaching. Nobody teach about walking, walking, walking. It's a problem. Torah is not about teaching. Torah is about doing, brothers and sisters. It's about the actions, it's about the avodah. It's not about what you know here. I pray that your ministry will not just be a teaching ministry, but will be a walking ministry, Lance. You hear me? The intellectual part has been already handled <laughs> by the other parts of the human body, the sages. Wow, yeah, we do study the rabbis and we do study the sages. And yes, it is wonderful, but that's not the essence. The essence of our generation is to walk it out. And that's one thing that you see in Esther and Mordechai. They are walking it out. They are walking it, walking it, walking it. What is put upon us as we rectify the final body part, the heel, we are to do in simplicity as doers of the Torah. My goodness. You see, when he promised us the Menachem, he has promised us the Menachem to help us in this journey. The Menachem is not going to do the journey for us. And that's something we need to understand. The Menachem is not. When the disciples of Yeshua coming down from heaven, what did they ask him? Lord, if you come to restore the kingdom to Israel, what did he answer? No, I'm not going to walk it out for you. I'm not going to prepare the Adar season for you. You prepare the Adar season. I'm going to give you the Menachem. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. But it is you who have to overcome this terrible time. And it's going to hurt. I know people don't want to hear it. They want a 30 minutes message. It's all going to be all right. It's all going to be good. You're not going to suffer. You're going to go immediately to heaven to do Hava Nagila with Yeshua. It's a lie. It's a lie. Even the church does not understand that we already tired of Jacob trouble. Just a few weeks ago, I was in Israel and I called my friend. Um, he's an Orthodox Jew. Happened to, his name happened to be Jacob, Yaakov. And I said, Yaakov, what do you feel? We talk about Torah all the time. And Yaakov says to me, I feel that we are in Yaakov trouble. Jacob trouble. I don't care if you agree with this catology or not. For the Jew, he already feel like he is in Jacob trouble time. And I'm telling you, we are in trouble. We are in big, big trouble right now in Israel. And there ain't no weapons from America that's going to solve it except to Mashiach coming to Israel. There is no solution here. Should know that. How do we overcome this terrible time? We have to become a generation of the heel. And the walking is a corporate walking. It's not a walking that you are. Esther needed Mordechai. Mordechai needed the community. We are going to need one another more than ever. This time, the end, if you don't mind, Shani, go to the next slide. It's from the fall of Edom. It's the time that is called the cats. The cats mean the end. But the cats, meaning the end, it's come from the Hebrew word cots. Cots mean a thorny bush. Yes, there's going to be torn. But here's where the craze comes. So we say, I give you a menachem. You know what is a, a, a menachem? Menachem is mean something is going. When a child, you, have you ever had your son or your daughter, when they hit themselves and they got a boo-boo, right? And they run to you, Ima, Ima, Abba, Daddy, Gummy, na, 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 na. and they see, show you the boo boo, right? What do you do? Ma, 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 ma. Right? You kiss your kid, right? Magically, for the kid, it's already better, right? Because you are comforted in, right? That's called Menachem in Hebrew. You're comforted. But is, does he still have the boo boo? 
Does he still have that? Yes. You have to understand you are going to have boo-boos. The boo-boos are called the thorns, the thorns of the Geula. Women understand much better than men that even though you can go to the birthing, spa, uh, 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 birthing process and you can get the fedora, and the fedora can make it easier, but in the end of the day, it's still painful, right? It's still painful. And the same thing to us. Listen to what Semach Tzadik says on this. He said, the generation of Mashiach will surely be beloved. That's good news for you. You and I are going to be beloved. Even if they are an entirely unworthy generation, they can flip to become beloved by God. They can be changed to become beloved by God, who will bring them to teshuva as the root of their soul is higher than those of the other generation. When Messiah comes in the blink of an eye, all the surrounding thorns will be consumed in one moment and everything will be according to his one more own will. I want you to understand something. If we hold on all those thorns in one split second, they are going to be changing. You have low battery lens on your uh, phone and it's about to die in 20%. It's okay. Uh, 20%. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, just, I, I'm going to go a lot faster so we can finish in 20%. Hallelujah. <laughs> hey, are, are you with me? I'm on 50% mark, but anyway, after that, okay. Are you with me? This is very important that you understand this because you know everything in Torah, it says in Deuteronomy 34, the law Come, Navi Beisrael Kemoshe. What does that mean? That's the end of the Torah, thirty-four, twelve. What does that mean? And never a reason a prophet in Israel as Moses. When you read the Torah, don't call the Torah the law. Don't refer to first and foremost. Torah is prophecy. When we study Torah, the first thing that Moses is called is a prophet, the highest prophet. So let's look for a moment at Moses and the prophecy of the Kutzim, the thorns of Astarat Apanim, and how we overcome them. Let's look at the verses that you are really familiar with in the story of the burning bush, because the burning bush story is the story of the overcoming, of the uh, overcoming the birth pang of Mashiach. It says, and Moses said, next slide, Moses says, I must turn aside to look at this marvelous sight. Why does a bush burning up? You remember the story of the sne in Hebrew, the sne, the burning bush? When Adonai saw that he had turned aside to look, God called to him out of the bush. And he says to him, Moshe, Moshe. And he answered like Isaiah in one word, Hineni, here I am. You have to understand that the story here is a story for Moshe and for his descendant to show him how redemption is going to come to the world and the pains that the redemption is going to come to the world. Remember, Moses was a picture of Messiah. And if you want a cross-reference to that, Micah 7.15 tell us that the final redemption going to resemble the first redemption. So when you read the story, the mosaic story from the beginning of Moses' life all the way to the tablets, it's a story that is going to repeat itself. Everybody with me? Moshe. Even if you take the word Moses is alive, it's equivalent to the term the Messiah. It's a, it's a parallel. Moses is a, That's why Yeshua refers to Moses so many times. I wrote about this a lot in the return of the kosher pig. But the question become, why did he show Moses this picture? What can we learn about this? About the thorns and the astarata panim and those things because it's going to be the, the hidden faces. Look at he says. The Tzemach Tzadik comment. And I wrote this in the fall of it all. Why did he show unto Moses the fire amid the thorn bush? But the fire refer to Israel. Remember that. Fire in the scripture refer to Israel. Okay? And who is compared to, as it says, and the house of Yaakov shall be a fire. The book of Ovadia. Ovadia 118. Israel called the house of fire. The thorn bush reaffirmed, well, again, what's the word? The four, the cats. What's the word thorn bush? The word the end. 
You have to understand this is a prophecy. The word bush, the torn bush here is the same word, kotzim, as the, by the way, what did you show word on his head? Crown of thorns, hallelujah. The beginning of the end was with the crown of thorns of Yeshua. That is exactly right. That's the word in. What did he see? He's seeing the thorns of the Gentiles of the nations who will turn against Israel. Then look what he says here. The nations are compared to torn and thistle. And he said, likewise shall Israel be amid among the nation. The fire of Israel. Now, what does he see in the vision? Remember what he see in the vision. He's seeing the fire. He's seeing the thorns. Are, are, is, the, is the thorn, is the fire consuming the thorn? Why? Why is the fire not consuming the thorns? You are correct. In the future, only on the days of the coming of the Mashiach, the fire of Israel will consume the nation who are compared to Torah. This is as it says in Isaiah 33, 12. The people will be as if burned into lime, like stones cut off and burned into the fire. We are not in the time that Israel can overcome right now. What's happening in the world? Look at this. 150 days almost to the war. We have returned Gaza to the Stone Age. Where are the hostages? Every bomb has been bombed upon Gaza. Where are the hostages? The hostages will not return. And Israel will not have peace. Until another force will come and consume the nation. And all of you, there are some people online that just drive me crazy. They love Israel so much. You're so fanatic, fanatic for Israel. Say, Israel don't be all right. Israel is not going to be all right. Until Israel strip naked of its pride. Listen to me. I'm Israeli Jew. I am telling you that. We are seeing a vision here of the torn, the birth pangs. And here they have an Ezra next slide. Shady. He said, In my opinion, the word snare bush referred to only one thing to the dry, torn bush. Mount Sinai is also named because it's the type of bush grew there. What was around Mount Sinai, beloved? The snare. You know, around Mount Sinai, there was full of thorns. That's what the evidence was telling us. In order to get to the future Mount Sinai, we're going to have. To step on some thorns. There is no other way around it. I know the church doesn't want to hear it. But you must be sensitive to that. And understand. There is no future Sinai. Until we overcome these thorns. And step on them. And yes it's going to hurt. And you're going to have boo boo. But that's why you need the Menachem. That's why we need Yeshua today. Just as much as we're going to need him tomorrow. How do we overcome it? I'm tired of this. I'm going everywhere in the world right now. I don't want to even wear a keep on my head because I'm worried somebody going to come behind me and stop me. Even today, the rabbits told me, please, 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 don't wear keep up publicly. And first I said, no, 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 no. You're, you are, you're out of your mind. That's the argumentation. But then common sense, also known as your wife, come to you. And say, I'm not going to wear this kippah. It is wisdom. Because she start looking around me. And people give me a funny look. Maybe it's better not to wear the kippah upon ourselves. Because right now, we have to understand what is happening in the world. Anything that is, is associated with Jacob. The moment, listen, beloved. The moment you associate yourself with Jacob. You're going to suffer thorns. I promise you that. The moment you are going to, you don't have to say you're Jewish if you're not Jewish. But the moment you stand for Israel, stand for the Jewish people, you are going to experience persecution without a doubt. But look at this thing. Remember, he's seen the vision and not being consumed, right? Everybody, everybody with me. But look at the future. Look at the future. Psalm 106, 18, it says, A fire blazes among their party. A flame will be consuming the wicked. 
Let me tell you something. There's a better fire that is coming here in the near future. And this word here is the trick. If you want to overcome the wickedness in the world, you need to learn those two words. Be'adatem lehava. The entire gospel and overcoming the last days is, is about those two words. Be'adatem lehava. This is the two things you have to do. Because look what he's going to say. He's going to say, I'm going to bring... A flame, but that's not a regular flame. Remember, flame is the word like for fire. Flame is the word ash, ash. Yeah, but here it used the word lehava. There's a difference between the word ash and the word lehava. You know, when you go in there, like bomb and you make a little fire, that's ash. But what the heck is lehava? Lehava is a flame in the size of this building. You have to understand something, that Big Brother is coming soon. And Big Brother is going to take this, this fight because the little children got hurt. God is not going to put up with this for much longer and he's ultimately going to come when Israel is stripped naked. Do you remember Yaakov running away from Esau? Everybody remember that, right? And he was in Beersheba, oh, I'm so happy. Let's go Beersheba. Let's call it Puyallup. Puyallup, whatever. Pu Puyallup. <laughs> oh, I'm sweet little town in Puyallup. Oh, hallelujah. Think about it. He lived Puyallup. He lived Beersheba, the well of fullness. Beersheba. He lived the place of comfort. And what does he do? He ran away. Why is he running away? Because Esau have a son. Wait, 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 wait. What is Esau's children name? He have two wonderful names. Let me ask you, sir. In the Red Sea right now, who is firing rockets on Israel? Yemen. Yemen, a group called the Chutim. Who is the son of Esau? The son of Esau is called Yemen. Are you paying attention? It is biblical. The other side is called Eliphaz. He's a bounty hunter. He's coming. And notice something that is going to happen here in the text. And he's running away from him. And as he's running away from him, this is very, very important. He finally comes to Rachel. And when he comes to Rachel, he's weeping. So, oh, Rachel. Why is Yaakov, he's crying when he sees Rachel. The Midrash explained to us that he, Eliphaz is actually caught him. He caught him. Listen to me, brother. Sir. He caught him and he said, I'm going to let Louis live, Yaakov, if you give me everything that belongs to you. He was stripped naked. The reason he cried when he saw Rachel is because he stripped out of everything. He had nothing. And then Rachel accepted him. And then Yosef, Mashiach, was born into the world. Israel is not going to have salvation until we will be stripped out from everything. No military will be defeat. What is coming right now? You have to understand. You kill 10 of them, you're going to have a million of them. Now Ramadan is starting. You kill one Palestinian, billion will turn against you. There's no hand to this. You should understand this. This is the reality. Israel will not have salvation until Israel will meet Rachel, which I believe is the remnant nations coming together to bring bright birth to Mashiach to the world. Look at this. Vativar Esh, right? Fire. Uh uh. No. Ba'adatam lehava. It will come inside of them. There will be another fire for another. So let's look at that for a second. Let's break down the Hebrew. The word by the time, inside of the word at the time, you see the word edda, edut, testimony, community. But if you say bad, is the word for them, which is saying that somebody is going to come and fight for Israel. And if you read the book, The Fall of Edom, and you read the commentary in uh, Ovadia 118, you know what's going to happen. Yosef is going to come and he's going to fight for Jacob. Mashiach is going to pick up this fight. There's no other way for Israel to win it because we're not fighting against humans. We're fighting against demons. Read the book. But it's also said, Be'eda, which is important, within the Eda. 
Today, we need the fire of Yosef to come more than anything else. But you have to understand, I mean, it's not consumed right now. It's not consumed. We are trying, we're trying, we're bombing. We're... Why is it that we're not winning? You have to be spiritually sensitive to what's happening in Israel right now. This was written 1,500 years ago. Let's say 1,600 years ago. And it says, the burning bush that is not consumed have another name. It's called the snake, but it have another name. It's called the evil inclination. It's Satan. It is not going to be consumed, not by might, not by power, only by the spirit. You should know that. However, to the fire that is called Lahav, Write it, lahavut, love of excitement. Hallelujah. You have to understand something. Go back a uh, slide, change, change if you don't mind. Look at, the, go another slide. The word here for this fire, lehava, has another word in Hebrew. It's the word ecstasy. Not like where you go to the local cannabis store and you get the ecstasy card. <laughs> right? The green uh, mushroom. What is called purple letters, whatever it's called. <laughs> one of those stores, one of the finest establishments here. No, it's not one of those kind of lettuces. Look at what he's saying. To the fire of excitement toward our creator, the evil inclination is burning off. Hallelujah. As we walk without fear from the evil inclination, who is called Satan, the bush was not consumed as it is awaiting the world to come. The Olam Abba, as stated in Zechariah 13, 2. And the pure spirit and I will vanish from the land. The burning bush that is not fully consumed hints at the yoke of the exile until the, the, the end and represents Jacob's never-ending trouble. Look at what he says. In Ovadiah 1.18, beloved, look at this. The house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Jacob, Joseph is going to be a flame. That's something you have to understand. When this final battle is taking place, we're going to see something we've never seen in human history ever. Mashiach and Israel are going to join forces. Israel is going to have an ecstasy for Messiah. And Messiah, the more Israel is going to be excited, the more the bigger the flame is going to get. Look at this for a second. Shani, next slide. Lehava, the word that is used here for the word lehava, the flame of God, is the same word as the Lord love, which is the sword of God, which is the same word as the word it lahavut, which is our spiritual excitement. Let me tell you that in the simplest way that I can tell you. When you Becoming excited about the one who is coming. And you do not live your life in despairs, worry, agony, or doubt. When you get excited, most of the world today is going crazy. Oh, I'm so scared. I'm so scared. No, don't be scared today. Kumiori, be excited. Have it lahavut today. The it lahavut is what's sharpening the sword of God. What's making the, the flame go. It's something that we all need. I pray for all of you. That is, you build your congregation. You build your community. You will not be Baptist. No. Chosen. We are not Baptist. As messianic believers. We are excitable bunch. You know why? Because in the beginning of every synagogue, it says on the top, know who you're standing before. If you know who you are standing before, and if you know who is coming and who is returning, you have no other way than to have it lavut. And the more it lavut you have, the bigger flame that is returning. Does look at this. This is not just me. Look what Paul is saying. Paul saying Romans 12, 11, say, do not lack in it lahavut. Be fervent in spirit. Keep serving the Lord. The word it lahavut in Greek literally means to be boiled with heat or to be hot. 
I have a question to you today. Who is really hot for God today? Who is really on fire for God? Only people who are in fire for God today, those will be the people that will be able to overcome the Astarata Panim because it's now in nowhere. Well, no, guess what? When you live your life in Tlavut, in spiritual zeal, he is going to reveal himself in a supernatural fire in the days ahead. I don't want to live my life in despair because this word in Hebrew, the derivation of the word Tlavut, look at the next slide, is the word Belibat, which is a blazing fire that has the same value as the word Messiah, son of David. When you're on fire, Mashiach become real. I don't want to talk about Mashiach. I don't want just to speak about Mashiach and pray for you. I want to experience Mashiach today. And the only way to do it is to be charismatic. You know, I can do charismatic, Shani. <laughs> I can do Baptist, I can do Catholic, I can do it all. But I'm telling you, there's only one way to be with Hashem in the days ahead. And this way to be with Hashem is to be excited. That's how you overcome Hastarat Apanim. And you see when Moshe Rabbeinu see the thorns and he understand the vision that those are the thorns of the Geula, the thorns that will consume Israel. What does he ask God? Next slide. He say, Madua lo ivar hasne. Why did the bush does not burn up? You know those word Madua is an acronym. Mem, Malach. Dale David Vav Vavti Ve Ve Ein Alein. It's a code in the Hebrew language. David, my servant, will rule upon them. God is even telling the remedy. Ah, 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 ah. Moshe, you are out of your league. Moshe, you cannot do that. There is one who is going to come after Moshe who is going to be able to consume the nation. Moshe, it's not you. I didn't say it, and maybe some to somebody Jewish anti-Semitic. I didn't say that the Talmud say that. Look at the next slide, Vahim 102. He said, Moses requested that he will be giving the kingship. Wow, look at this. That's the question of Moses. Can I be king? Still, it was not given to him. Incredible. It was written, do not draw hither. The words here, hitter, refer to nothing other than the kingship, as it is stating. Then David, the king, went and said before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my house that you have brought me hither? Moses could not fulfill it because Moses is not a king. Why did he ask Moses to do? He said to Moses, take off your shoes, right? You see, God has told him who is going to be able to consume it. Look at the code in the Hebrew. Right? He said, take off your sandals from your, from your feet. Halom shal na'alecha. If you look at the suffix of the Hebrew, mem, lamed, chaf, melech. Stripped King Messiah. You know, the entire gospel is fine here. You are removing something because it's going to be a melech, a king that is going to appear stripped without his garment, without his clothes. Who is the one who is a gar king without a garment, without his clothes? That is King Mashiach. And here it says that he is the only one who will be able to consume you have to understand until mashiach come we all are in big big trouble you hear what i'm saying to you your job today is to find the stripped mashiach and get excited about him he's stripped he's not mashiach to israel today you know people hate the name of yeshua in israel it's the truth get excited about this stripped king messiah today he is real and he is the king of mashiach and i'm not ashamed in the name of yeshua and neither to you let's close it off last slide go warrior he appeared in the burning bush as a sign for the future to explain to us that when Israel is in trouble and distress, so is he. 
studied Psalm 91. When he calls me, I will answer him. I will be with him in distress. When Israel is in distress, his kingdom is not complete, which is why he appeared from the burning bush. Of course, his distress is the distress that is dressed, quote unquote, only in our world, not in the heavenly realm. This is the truth that we have to understand. When there is a starat panim, you know who is more distressed than you are? We don't think about this like this, but I want you to think about this. When there is a starat panim, God is more in distress than you can ever imagine. Why? Because he loves us. He loves you. He wants you to be with him more than anything else. So what is he doing? He sent his son, Mashiach. I was thinking about it this week. I we was going to the forest and we did a 6.5 hike, miles hike, with 2,000 elevation gain. And we did it without the spikes, without the spikes. You know, every step, every step I was walking, it's hurt. And then I told my wife, I'm losing my toes. I'm telling you, I feel I'm losing my toes. You know? You know what happened when I get to reach the top? Somebody gave me a warmer. Somebody gave me sticks. And it's eased the burden. It is eased the pain. That's what the Holy Spirit is. You might walk your walk and your daily days and you don't see God and you don't say, I don't feel God, I don't hear God. I tell you something, he's there. And the way you make him real in your life is by taking this sword. I'm telling you something, when you get excited, when you become a little bit more charismatic, I'm joking, you understand what I'm saying? When I say charismatic, making him real in your life that's when the signs and the wonders and the miracles and the appearance of God become very real. If we all, what we do is spend time learning about God, praying to God, and there's no response, then something is very wrong. Today is the day for all of us to be excited about Him, to truly be excited about Him. So there is a time of Astarat Apanim. But remember something? That Purim is a time it said that the Jews had gladness and joy. They were excited. Every Shabbat, we close Shabbat. And what do we do? We do Avdalah. Why? To get a little bit of the Hitler Havut in us, right? No, you're excited to do some Hitler Havut, to have some Hitler Havut. You're ready for to do the Hitler Havut? You'll be better. Don't be a Baptist on me. <laughs> right now, who wants to receive the gift of Itlavut? Who wants to receive the gift of Would you stand with me as we close this, this time? I want to pray for you to receive the gift. You and Morel Lenz can come forward there now and take over. Lord, I'm coming right now in a great fila, in a great prayer for the house of God. And I'm asking today, we are in the midst of the kotzim and the thorns. But if we walk on top of the thorns, like the generation of the hill, but we walk it in it lavut, you're going to ease our pain. Lord, you are going to ease our pain. I'm asking today. That as we get this spiritual fervor of Romans 12, 11 into our life, you ease the pain of those days ahead. May no man, no woman here will fall into depression. May no man, may no woman here will fall to helplessness. May no man, woman, or child here will fall into the spirit of defeat. There will be no defeat. Instead of that, we say today, there will be life. There will be victory starting today, right now. It's okay to raise your hands to the God. It's okay to call upon God. Don't worry about your neighbor. Believe today that as you call upon him, 
as you call upon him, he will be answering today. But the one thing he says, you better not be, you better not be called on me. Don't turn cold on me. He says in Matthew that people love will turn cold. We refuse yes. to be cold. And you know what makes us cold? Sin makes us cold. So if you're sinning, if we live a life for sin, right now, just speak to the Lord and say, Lord, I am asking today that you take the sin away from me. I choose not to sin. I choose to live my life sin free so that I will have the full fire of God. You see, brothers and sisters, the word Hamas in Hebrew is mean hellish heat. The word Hamas, listen to me carefully right now. He's mean ham. He's mean hellish heat. There are two heat. And you have to choose which heat you're going to receive tonight. Either the heat of the Lord or the hellish heat of the spirit of Hamas. Who is here today? Reject the spirit of the Hamas and the spirit of hellish. Just declare it right now. We're going to take 30 seconds. Just declare it and say, I want to eat love. You have to be excited about it. Can we open our mouth for 30 seconds and just speak to the Lord? You have everything I have to tell you. Now it's not important. Now it's important. It is the Lord. Raise your mouth, 30 seconds, and speak to him. Say, I want to be excited about the one who is coming. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Raise your voice. You are well, loud, louder during Onik. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want the joy. I want the joy. I want the excitement, Lord. I want the sword. I am not going to be cold. I am not going to be cold. My love to you will not grow cold. It's not going to grow cold. I am going to love your neighbor. I'm going to love my neighbor and myself. I'm going to love the other people. That's what's causing heat when you love your neighbor. We are not going to be, as the book of Revelation said, people will be lovers of themselves. We reject it. We're going to love our neighbors. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is the time for the love right now. So release it, release it, release it, release it, release it upon your people. In the merit of our Mashiach, release excitement. Not just on Shabbat, on a Sunday, and on a Monday. Release every day this great excitement upon the people of God. And all of the people of God say together, Amen. Amen. Look at this. Look what the Lord has given us. He gave us three things. Three things to close the Shabbat with. And those three things, those three things, brothers and sisters, are necessary to overcome Astarat Apanim. He gives us the candles, which represent the fire of God. He gives us the wine. Wine represents the joy of the Lord. And he gives us the spices. That are represent the spices that are represent the fragrance of the Lord. Those are the three things that each and every one of us need. The joy, the fire, and the fragrance of God. Don't go. So you know what he's doing in the end of the Shabbat? He knows you're going to have a, 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 some challenges this week. So we give you a little bit extra so that you will thrive in the days ahead, this week ahead. A week represents like a geula. May by next Shabbat Mashiach will come. And if he doesn't come by next Shabbat, we'll do it all over again until he come. Amen? Amen. So I ask Noach to lead us. Come, Noach. Come, young Noach, and lead us in the Avdalah. Do you mind lighting the candle? Hold on. Get him on mind. And I'm going to ask everybody to come a little closer. Even if we cram at the, la the Hamel's home, that's okay. They don't mind. Yeah. The house is insured. Don't worry. We don't create <laughs> fire hazard. Come. Well, especially those who want to come closer to the fire. So that you will see this. And let me pour some more. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. 
And notice that the cup is always full because we are seeking this fullness, the fullness of the Lord. Hallelujah. And it starts with those words that found in the Psalm, Hine El Yeshuati. We all, this is the Lord, this is the Lord of our salvation. Today, right now, the sword is getting much, much bigger for all of us. For all of us. Kadim Anoach. Hine El Yeshuati, Eftach Velo Echad. Ki azihi vezimrat yadonai Vayili lishua Ushavtem ayim besasson Mimai ayinei ayishua Ladonai haiku Adonai Adonai <laughs> The fragrance of the Lord. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Bore mine vesami Bore mine vesami do this. Who wants the flame? Come closer. I want the flame. The flame of excitement. Come, come. This is the flame we spoke about. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Hamabdil ben Kodesh lechol Beno lechoshel ben Yisrael l'amim Ben Yom Ashvii Lesheshet yeme hamaseh Baruch atah Adonai Hamavdil ben Kodesh Lechol Lechaim! Lechaim everybody! And now we can say goodbye to the Shabbat. Lance, are you ready? We're ready. All right. You want to do it? Let's do it. Shavuot Tov, Eliyahu.
Shavu Turn to your neighbor. Tell Shavu Turn to somebody. Tell him Shavu 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 And we conclude with Eliyahu Navi. We are exciting. Yes. Mashiach is coming today. Today to every house. To every family, go in excitement yes. to know the word of Psalm 95. I am coming today. If you listen to my voice, Eliyahu Hanavi. Eliyahu Hanavi, Eliyahu Hatishbi, Eliyahu, Eliyahu Hagilab, Eliyahu Hanavi, Eliyahu. Mashiach ben David, Eliyahu, Hanavi, Eliyahu, Atishbi, Eli, Eliyahu, Eliyahu, Hagilad, Eliyahu, Hanavi, Eliyahu, Atishbi, Eli, Eliyahu, Eliyahu, Hagilad, Bimera, Yavo, Eleinu, Mashiach, Mashiach ben David, Bimera Yavo, Eleinu, Mashiach, Mashiach ben David. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. He's returning, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hamashiach, <laughs> I I I I Ani ani Edgar, they they came all the way from from uh, Edgar and his family. They came all the way from Canada, oh, and I know uh, where is uh, Lori and Sheila. Oh, Lorraine. you came from Portland, so you came a long way. 
I, I want just no, let the Bukai Koranim, if you don't mind, just pray for safety mm -hmm. for everybody traveling uh, upon you. And I'll just tell you, those who are interested, I have all the books here. I don't have much left, but I have the new Hamas. This is the order the new Hamas, the fall of Edom, Riv Remnant. So if you're interested, come and talk to me uh, privately after this. But we just want to say again, um, what a blessing it is to share my heart with you tonight, yeah. and uh, and I I am telling you this is not just for you; it's for me. Let's get excited yes. about Mashiach. And on behalf of our Kahila, on behalf of uh, Shani and myself, thank you for blessing our home with your presence, your family, with the teaching. Uh, we couldn't have asked for a better a better end to the Shabbat. Oh, praise God. Oh, Amen. No, let's bless everybody with this traveling. We ask for traveling mercy also upon everybody who has been here and uh, especially those who have a long drives as well. Thank you. Eloheinu velo evoteinu bacheinu vaberacha meshuleshet batora haketuval yede moshe avdecha mora mipiaron uvanav konimam keroshecha kamu יברך אדוני וישמרך יא אר אדוני פניו אליך וחונקה יישא אדוני פניו אליך ושם לך שלום יהיה רצון שלום לכל הקומיוניטי שלום שלום לנסל שני חוסול ופמילי and may you always be a community of Shalom Amen. as you grow. Amen. 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 Amen